Another beautiful morning in London. Jackson's Journeys, day three. Breakfast in London at St. James Park. Just trying to kill time before I see the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. Changing the guard is over. Heading back towards uh, Trafalgar Square. Gonna try to take a uh, rock and roll walking tour. <laughs> Where the rock and rollers used to hang out. Okay, uh, go inside there. It's called the Scotch because it used to be entirely decorated with tartan. Tartan carpets, tartan walls, tartan ceilings. Not a place to have a bad acid trip inside the Scotch St. James, okay? 
Uh, but yes, uh, the Beatles would have had their own table, the Stones as well. People think they didn't get on. They were rivals in the charts, trying to get that number one single. Off stage, they were good mates. They wrote songs for each other. That's where they used to hang out. All the rock and roll royalty, shall we say, inside the Scotch St. James. Another good reason, Stephen Ongpin and Guy Pepiat over to your right hand side there. Uh, it's an art gallery nowadays, and it was an art gallery in 1966 as well. Back then it was called the Indica Art Gallery, uh, specialised in sort of modern avant-garde art. In November 66, there was a Japanese artist exhibiting inside there, named Yoko Ono. Yes, that's where John met Yoko inside there. He'd been having a drink in the Scotch, and Paul McCartney had checked out an exhibition already. He said to John, get in there, you'll like it, it's, it's good. John goes in, he's had a few drinks, but he was in a merry mood, shall we say. He likes what he sees. Uh, he's especially drawn to a piece called Hammer and Nails. It's a block of wood, about so big, attached to the wall, loads of nails hammered into it. The idea is you pay five shillings, 25 pence in modern money, uh, to hammer a nail into a block of wood, evolving the artwork. Modern art, as I say. John thinks this is brilliant. Picks up a nail, about to hammer it in. All of a sudden, Yoko appears beside him and says, uh, that'll be five shillings, please. John goes, I'm, I'm sorry, what? He said, it's five shillings, I'm, I'm Yoko, I'm the artist, how I make my money. And John goes, well, I don't carry cash with me. I'm like the queen, I don't need it. I'm a beetle. Yoko goes, What's a beetle? Never heard of you. She knew what a beetle was. They were quite a popular combo in 1966. This was flirting back then, yeah. Uh, in the end, they agreed to a compromise. Uh, John paid an imaginary five shillings to hammer an imaginary nail into the block of wood. That's where their friendship started. More cynical tour guys tell you that was the first nail in the coffin of the Beatles. I'm no cynic though. Didn't hear that one from me. No. So yeah, John met Yoko in there. Abercrombie and Fitch, kids department, over the way there. Rock and roll, yes. <laughs> that used to be the headquarters, the offices for the Beatles. Apple Records were based inside there. A famous rooftop concert took place up the top there on the 30th of January, 1969. Lunchtime this was. They get up there, take their instruments and amplifiers up top and start to play. Thousands of people swarming down the streets here. Some are climbing up the lampposts, up the drain pipe even, even trying to get closer. Stops just short, so it slides back down. But yeah, you can hear the Beatles playing this free concert, fantastic stuff. They finish with a rousing rendition of Get Back. As the final chord fades away, John steps up to the microphone and says, on behalf of the band and ourselves, I want to say thank you very much. I hope we pass the audition. And that was it, no more Beatles after that. This is where the Jimi Hendrix experience first played. So he had his first gig, or first on stage performance to the Scotch St. James, first stop. He got his band together. Two months later, this is where they unleash themselves uh, into the world, really. Don Arden and Mob Band, the small faces. Uh, it's their office, the old, above the Puma building here. Don Arden uh, kind of had the nickname the Al Capone of pop music. Very tough man, not afraid to use his fists if things weren't going his way in negotiations, OK? One man was too much of a handful for him, though. Uh, as well as Small Faces, he looked after several other bands, including Black Sabbath. And Ozzy Osbourne, too much for Don Arden to handle. He sacked him from the band. Uh, he said, Ozzy, I can't work with you, but I like you. I'm going to give you your own manager. Uh, my daughter's getting the music management. Ozzy, meet Sharon. Sharon Osbourne. Yeah, marvellous stuff. That's what they meant, just up there. It's like I say, rock, roll and love on this tour. It's a lovely thing. The universe, yeah. yes. That's, a, that's really what we're meant to be looking at, yeah? Uh, there used to be a pub in the early 1960s called the Bricklayer's Arms. Uh, it's upstairs, the Bricklayer's Arms, that the Rolling Stones had their first auditions behind the bricked in windows up there, okay? Uh, it's also in that room, by the way, they got their name. Initially, they were thinking of maybe going by Little Boy Blue and the Blue Boys. I think, no, we can't do that. Bill, uh, Brian's phoning round to try and get their first gig. He's asked, what's the name? And it's, I just falls on a table, there's a Muddy Waters album. One of the tracks on there, Rolling Stone. And he thought, that's it, we're the Rolling Stones. The name is stuck to this day. Much better than Little Boy Blue. Yeah. Yeah. Here's Trident, not much to look at, but rock and roll history has been made behind this blue window and that blue door there. Who Reed and David Bowie, we mentioned them. It's where they've recorded my favourite album of all time, Hunky Dory, inside here. So Life on Mars, Changes. Well, inside there, the Stones as well, Queen I've mentioned, Classic Ono Band, so John and Yoko have got inside there, uh, Mark Bolner, T Rex, Ryder Swan, Get It On, all that. Super Trapped, Connie Simon recorded You're So Vain inside there, that song's about me. Uh, James Taylor, Harry Nilsson, Ringo, Elton John recorded your song inside here, Dusty Springfield, Dedic and the Dominoes, Frank Zappa, and many, many more. Like I say, rock and roll history inside this place here. Uh, War, very good band, worth a listen. And they were performing there two nights. This was in uh, 1970, September 1970, about the 18th and 19th. 
and it was um, yeah inside there that Jimmy joined him on stage. Turned up on the first night, um, wasn't let in the club. He, be, he was quite drunk, too drunk to be let in. Turns up again the second night, yeah, he was allowed in. Eric spots Jimmy in the audience, says, Jimmy, you've got to get on stage, jam with us, man. He did. It was a fairly subdued performance, though, just three tracks, just playing backing guitar. No tricks, didn't play behind the head or anything like that. Just backing guitar. Jimmy, shall we say, wasn't well at this time. Uh, he'd been living the rock and roll lifestyle a bit too heavily, drinking, and there have been drugs involved as well. He was coming up to the end. In fact, just two days after this performance, uh, Jimmy passed away. The Dean Street Studios, across the street there. Uh, it used to be known as the Good Earth Studios. Tony Visconti worked a lot with David Bowie and Brian Eno in the 70s. That was his studios. Uh, now the Dean Street Studios, uh, where Thin Lizzy uh, recorded a couple of albums. Uh, also, uh, Noel Gallagher, Paul Weller have recorded in there. And the Black Eyed Peas as well, but this is a rock and roll tour, so don't mention them really here. Led Zeppelin was formed down this road. I would love to be able to tell you, take you to the building, we don't know which one it is though. Uh, you know how they say, you can remember the 1960s, you weren't properly there? Led Zeppelin were there, okay? They were quite, quite drunk on this first uh, jam session. Uh, Ze Led Zeppelin they rose out of the ashes of a band called the Yardbirds. It's got quite the pedigree. And you've got Jeff Beck and Eric Clapton's from the Yardbirds. And of course you've got Jimmy Page as well. When the Yardbirds sort of finished up, they got some mates together to have a jamming session somewhere down here. They can't agree where it was. Now I thought you're here for the Prince of Wales Theatre where the Book of Mormon is shown just over the way. That's where the Beatles performed in front of the Queen back in 1964. Yeah. Uh, the Royal Command performance, or the Royal Variety Show, we also call it. Big charity show. We get uh, the Queen or various other members of the Royal Family having, uh, well, bands, singers, comedians, dancers, jugglers, all kinds of good stuff performing for the Queen. It's brilliant. Headline act in 64, the Beatles. Yeah, it's um, playing in front of the Queen. It's awesome stuff. The rock walk is over. Tired, need to eat something. <laughs> Tore it up. Super hungry. So what happened is, uh, once again, my foot resting turned into a long nap. Uh, except this time I slept till about 10.30 p.m. I don't know if it's the uh, jet lag or just the miles of walking, but yeah. So the problem is most of the bars here close at 11 p.m. So now I'm on the hunt for uh, after hours. There's only a handful around, so let's see if I can find one. It's about 2.30 a.m. Coming back to the room from my uh, after hours bar that I finally found. Got me a little late night snack. Now that's how you end the night. It's my last morning here in London. Gonna catch a plane to Amsterdam later on about 2 p.m. Uh, it's about 9 a.m. now. Uh, just gonna go do some souvenir shopping and get me another English breakfast. I love that English breakfast. Um, yeah, nice town. See you later. All right, bought the souvenirs. Now it's time for my breakfast, the porcupine. Uh, this was one of the best English breakfasts I've had here, so I'm gonna have it one more time. This is the hotel report. Just as I do, this train will remain in the map for approximately five minutes before departure. Waiting for the flight to Amsterdam, cool view, and a cappuccino.